In this video, we're going to show you how to replace front brakes on this 2017 Compass. Let's remove the tire, 19 millimeter socket for the lug nuts. Leave it partially on, so that way we can make sure that it comes off. So first thing I like to do is turn the wheel so I have better access to the caliper mounting. And on this caliper we have a 14 millimeter socket to take the caliper off of the bracket. But first thing I'm going to do is take this boot off of the bleeder screw, loosen that bleeder screw up, then snug it up so that I can push that piston back. So now I'm going to remove that boot on that bleeder screw, set it aside because I'm going to reuse it. Now that bleeder screw is like 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. We're going to break that free. There we go. Make sure fluid comes out. Yep. And now we're just going to slightly tighten it so that it's easier to loosen up once this is free flo floating. So now we're going to remove the caliper from the bracket. And that's a 14 millimeter socket. I'm just break it free. And then I'll just get my Electric, electric ratchet and make it go faster. Always pay attention when you take slider pins out. Sometimes there's a surprise and there's one with a boot. The boot usually always goes on the top pin. Don't know why. So now I'm going to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket. Just a little pry bar. Work it back and forth. Get it to come out. So to get that out a little easier, I'm going to push that piston back. But the key here is to open this bleeder screw. Nowadays with ABS modules, it's always best practice is to crack that bleeder screw before you push that piston back. I do have a catch pin underneath, as you can hear. I'm just going to snug it back up. Now I can take it off freely. I see someone else has been in here before. So yeah, they put all that silicone RTV on the back. It's kind of not necessary if you get the right brakes. I'm going to put my caliper piston spreader on. Just as it gets snug, I'm just going to hold it there. And then I come back with my wrench and open that bleeder screw. Aim it towards our little bucket. I'm looking for free flow, nice, effortless pushing that piston back. That indicates a really good caliper. There's no dragging. That internal seal is doing its job. And once I snug this and the piston bottoms out, we'll look at the external dust seal and confirm that there's no fluid leaking out. Now I'm just going to snug this up. When you're done with your brake job, you don't have to do a big brake bleed. You can just open it and let it gravity bleed. Now I'm just going to flick my, reverse that, take that out. Now we're looking for any fluid that's coming out of that dust seal. The real seal that does the job on this is midway on that caliper inside that bore cylinder. I'm going to get a caliper hook so I can hang the caliper from the strut. Right through there and hang it right up on my strut. Perfect. Now I have clear access at my caliper bracket. All right, let's get the pads out of the way. That's the, what we call the outer pad, and this is the inner pad. It 
it's always good when you do a brake job to pay attention to something and how it comes out. So we know that the indicator is on the top and that's exactly where it should be because you want to put it the closest surface as it rotates around. That would be the top right there. But I want to look at the angle and confirm that it's evenly worn all the way around. That'll also tell me if there's a problem with the bracket or if the pad, this has been changed, it's not factory because you can see that aftermarket orange goop. That means that these pads fit properly and they slid back and forth smoothly, which is what we're looking for. So now I'm going to take the caliper bracket off of the knuckle and that's an 18 millimeter socket on the two mounting bolts that are located right there. Just loosen them up. And then I'll get my electric ratchet. Now we can remove this rotor. All right, so now we're going to clean the bracket before we put the pads on and put the new hardware on. So you want to take a flat screwdriver or a pry bar, take those old tins off, do a quick match, make sure they're exactly the same or close enough to do the job. The last person did the job, pretty good. Clean that area up, but I'm going to take my metal brush and really get ready any of rust buildup. Don't forget the fronts here. A lot of people just go past that. They really need to make sure that's good. You want to get rid of all materials. So we have a nice clean seat. Do the same to the other side. You can take a wire wheel to this. If you have an electric wire wheel, feel free. But pay attention to the rubber boots because you don't want to damage them. So after we're done this, Matter of fact, you should do it before you even bother wasting energy. Make sure the boots are good. No tears. If there's a hole in it, it's no good. Get rid of it. Okay, so that was fine. Now, I practice putting a high temp sill glide or caliper grease on the caliper bracket on the bottom, not on the top. To me, it's just common sense. The reason why we put it here under the tins is so that rust doesn't build up and push the tins up, which would make the pads non-slidable. So I put that tin right down in, let it lock in. Perfect, do the same to the other side. Like I said, a nice high temp silicone grease or caliper grease. But it has to be high temp because the brakes get hot. Now I do not practice putting grease on the top where the pads slide. Well, to me, it's common sense. I want that pad to slide all the time in and out as the caliper gets used. I put grease on there, collects all the road dirt and brake dust and stops it from sliding. So if you get your brakes are done properly, you shouldn't need to grease that up. So now we're going to put this back on the hub after we clean the hub. So this is what we call a hub. This is where our rotor is going to hit and have a surface here. We want this surface to be smooth. Feel the rust, you see that lip right there, that high rise spot, both of those spots is where the rotor sits. If there's rust buildup, that rotor, even when it gets bolted on, is going to wobble. That's kind of defeats what we're doing here. So a wire brush or a brass brush, you want to get rid of any of the corroded area. I'm going to use a air powered one in two seconds. I do not like taking green cookies, which they call cookies, grinders, because then you actually compromise the metal and you cut the metal away. But you could always use a wire brush. <laughs> Next step would be you could use what I call an abrasive cookie. like a high grit sandpaper. Then they actually make a tool that goes around the lug nuts to get that surface. So 
So those are the three to four ways that I use to clean that surface. Now once it's cleaned, I don't see anything hanging around. I don't need to spray any parts cleaner on it or anything because I'm gonna coat it with high temp anti-seize of some sort. I like to use the copper. It's a higher temp than the silver and you're not gonna cake it. Don't make it a too much because then it gets on everything. Just the mat matting surface is what you wanna cover. So I am putting on what we call drilled and slotted performance rotors. And you can see the slots. These are the slots, sorry, in the drills. And the way to use our brand is to use it so that it goes like a wave this way, not into the wind. See how it's cut in? You'd think, oh, that should be going in the front way. Nope, they want it this way to go into the wind. That is the best way I could describe it. And if you look on our site, it does also tell you the proper way to install. I put a lug nut on just to control that rotor from flopping around. Just put it on hand tight. So now I'm gonna install the bracket and I will put new silicone or caliper grease in there after I've mounted it. You could do it before or after, it all depends. As long as it gets done, it doesn't bother me. So this, these are the 18 millimeter socket size ones and I'm just gonna bottom them out then I'll torque them to spec. So eight millimeter socket and the torque, this is called caliper bracket to knuckle bolts, 80 foot pounds. There is no inner or outer pad, so you get to choose which one you want. They both have the grooves for the indicator to sit. So the indicator is always gonna go on the inner pad and it's gonna go wherever the rotor, so if the caliper was in the back, it would go on the bottom. Caliper is in the front, goes on the top because you want the indicator to go on the first contact as it spins. So I'm gonna put this one on the inner and here's our new indicator that comes with the pad set. And you just basically fit it right in that slot, just like that. Make sure it goes in like that. And then we're gonna slide it right in on those new tins and that bracket. Perfect. Make sure it has a nice slide to it. Sometimes, it doesn't matter what brand you get, even factory, they won't slide smooth like that. That's exactly what we're looking for. There'll be no chatter. But if they get dipped in paint too much, have no fear to grind the, some of that paint down. Just clear it off, because this is what you want. If it's frozen in there and you had to hammer it in, these pads are gonna wear at an angle. That is the perfect fit. So now we're gonna get the caliper and put the caliper back on. But before I do that, I'm gonna take the pins that I already took out. I'm just gonna look at them, examine them, make sure they're not rusted, rotted, or pitted. I'm gonna clean them up. I don't need to take a wheel to them because these look pretty good, but I'm gonna put new slider grease on them. Don't forget the one with the rubber is the top. That's gonna go on the top of the caliper. But before I go too far, I'm gonna put some new Silglide grease on the inside of those caliper pins. So these are the boots. I wanna make sure they stay nice and lubricated. And the key here for me is to get grease on the inside of that boot in these little grooves. So when it goes down the road, eventually, it will always grab the grease from the inside of that boot. It won't dry out. Do the same to the top. And you'll know if you put too much in there because the pin won't go all the way in. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a good sliding pin, but we don't want it to be binding either. So now I'll just make sure that line is not twisted. It's not going the wrong way. Line that boot up. I'll do the same for the bottom. Get the top pin first. So now I've got some Sil Glide on or caliper grease on the pin itself. We know it's on the inside of that boot and the caliper bracket. Line it up, make sure it doesn't get pinched and start it by hand. Do the same to the bottom.
Now I'm going to take a 14 millimeter socket and my air ratchet and just bottom them out before I torque them. So now we're going to take our 14 millimeter socket and we're going to torque the caliper to bracket. This is 32 foot pounds. And the last thing I like to do is pump up the brakes, physically go in and push the brakes, make that piston come out, fill up the chamber with the cylinder with fluid, and then I will open that bleeder screw and let it gravity bleed, make sure no air bubbles come out, close it, clean the process. So now I, I pumped it up, I'm just gonna open that bleeder screw and let it gravity bleed into my bucket. After a couple of minutes, minute or two. Really snug it up. In the area around it. And always install that rubber boot again. If you don't have one, find something. Keeps the dirt out of that bleeder. Start all the lug nuts by hand. That's the 19 millimeter socket. And we will just snug them in a star pattern and then we'll torque it to manufacturer specs. Wheel torque on this vehicle is 100 foot-pounds for the lug nuts. Always do in a star pattern. Or crisscross. And then double check. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.